In this video, I'll be taking apart the Nothing Phone 1. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Next, we'll need to use a hair dryer or a heat gun to apply heat to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. Now some of these covers which are held down with some adhesive need to be peeled off and removed, including the wireless charging coil. On this bottom cover there's a flex cable attached to the subboard for the LED lights. So be careful when you're peeling it off that you don't tear the cable. Once that metal cover over the connector is lifted up, we can disconnect the flex cable. At this point, there are 12 T5 or Torx 5 screws which need to be removed. The small cover needs to be lifted up and removed. And then we can remove the subboard cover. At this point, we can disconnect the flex cable which is connected to the bottom subboard. Now the top earpiece speaker can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at that. Two flex cables on the top can be disconnected from the board. Now the cover with the wireless charging coil on it can be lifted up, but be careful since the wireless charging cable is still attached underneath. There are two Phillips screws that need to be removed. And then the cover around the cameras can be lifted up. Revealing two more T5 or Torx 5 screws and one more Phillips screw which need to be removed. Now the top cover can be lifted up and removed. There are some antenna lines which are these light gray colored lines on the plastic piece and the LED flash is located here. Looking at the other side, the flex cable for the wireless charging coil is located here. The cable for the light up LEDs around the camera is located here and the one for the light up strip is located here. All of those cables are adhered to the back of the plastic cover. There's also a secondary microphone located here and there's graphite film to help transfer heat. The battery cable can now be disconnected. And then we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. There are two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board that need to be disconnected by popping them off. There's some graphite film and copper tape covering the front facing camera connector that needs to be peeled off so we can disconnect and remove that. Here's a better look at the 16 megapixel front facing camera. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding on the main board that needs to be removed. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. On the main board there's a 50 megapixel ultra wide and a 50 megapixel primary lens. The primary lens is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's another microphone on the top corner, a liquid damage indicator sticker which is that white sticker, 
rubber gaskets around the connectors, and some graphite film over the front shields. The proximity sensor is located on the back, there's some copper tape behind the cameras, and some more graphite film on the back shields as well as thermal paste. Once the graphite film is peeled back, we can see more thermal paste on this chip, the RAM, and a thermal pad on the processor. Here's a better look with the thermal paste and thermal pad removed. To remove the battery, there's a pull tab provided to help you pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the 4500 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery adhesive pouch is peeled back, we have a better look at this flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard, the flex cable for the charger port, and the extension flex cable for the screen connector which is underneath the subboard. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding on the bottom speaker that needs to be removed. Now that speaker can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at that. The flex cable for the fingerprint reader, as well as the two other ends of the coaxial cable, need to be disconnected from the subboard. Then there's one more Phillips screw which is holding down the subboard that needs to be removed. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. The primary microphones located underneath the shield, and there are rubber gaskets around the connectors. The SIM reader is located on the other side. We can now see the flex cable for the screen which is connected to this extension flex cable that connects to the main board. So if you need to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, remove those covers and the screws, you'd have to disconnect the cables on the subboard and remove the subboard giving you access to the screen cable. And then once you disconnect the screen cable, you would heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply a new adhesive, Reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid-frame and reassemble the phone. Here's a better look at the charger port. And there's a red rubber gasket around it. The fingerprint sensor is located over here on the bottom and it's held down with some adhesive and the same goes for the x-axis linear motor next to it. There's another liquid damage indicator sticker on the bottom underneath the SIM tray and the flex cable for the volume key is located on this side and the one for the power button is located on the other side. Both are held down with some adhesive so if you want to replace those you have to gently pry those off and then there's a plastic bracket inside the frame that you pull out giving you access to removing them. Once this flex cable and protective tape is peeled off, we have a better look at the copper vapor chamber which is underneath the battery and runs underneath the motherboard. There's also a good amount of thermal paste between the copper vapor chamber and the back of the motherboard. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 3 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything is back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.